Hi everyone, this is Kelly for Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be making a loaf of soap in Choc Orange Lava Cake which is from Candle Supply. It says it has notes of citrus, mandarin, chocolate, orange, milk, truffle, cocoa powder and also has orange essential oil through it. Now, this is my first time using it. I'm suspecting that it, it will go brown. I am going to pour off a little test patch as well which I'll leave white to see how badly it discolours. But because I am expecting it to discolour, I will be making it as a layered soap using some brown and some orange and then doing some piping on the top. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started by mixing our lye water into our oils. Just before trace and what I'm now going to do is measure out my batter um, I'm only going to measure it out into a jug a single jug here I want about a fifth of my batter in this jug for the middle layer and I'm just going to go and measure that off camera and then I'll be back okay so I've got my batter split into my two pots here and I've also got just an extra little pot here and I have worked out that I need about three grams of fragrance oil in here. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of fragrance oil and pop it into this pot here. And this is going to be my little tester pot to see if this fragrance oil discolors. So in the future, if I decide I wanna do um, a different color of this one, I know what to expect. And it's already turned that quite a yellow color. So I'll just stir that in and I have just a tiny little mould here which I'm going to pour that into. Okay, so I've got my little tester and we're going to pop that to one side so it can set overnight. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the rest of the soap. Um, this little spare bit here, we might just pop that in here. Okay, so into my big bucket, I am using some mocha mica from my mica obsession, and I want this to be quite dark, so I'm using almost a tablespoon in there, and then into my smaller jug, I have some tangelo mica and some orange pop, both from my my mica obsession. And I'm going to measure those ones out into this jug and then I'm going to mix it up. Okay, so I've got the fragrance oil and the colours mixed up. Um, it appears to be behaving okay at the moment, which is okay because I actually want to do um, layers. So we do want it to thicken up just a little bit. So what I'll do for now, we'll move this one out the way and we'll go and grab the mould. Okay, so I've got my loaf mould here. I'm just making sure my line is all nice and straight and I'm going to start with my brown which has started to really thicken up on me so I'm going to move quite quick we're going to put a layer of brown on the bottom some orange through the middle and then some more brown on the top just to make it look like a lava cake does
okay so quite obviously this fragrance oil is a racer so anyone in Australia who has ever considered getting this fragrance for their soap may work with your recipe it may not um, but for me this has absolutely accelerated on me but even so the actual batter is still quite soft I've had other soap batters that have accelerated on me and they're just not pliable at all so at least this one stays nice and pliable and because of the effect that I'm after with this soap that I actually want very distinct layers of chocolate cake on the top and the bottom with the orange lava in the middle I'm not too bothered that this one has actually accelerated on me so it has actually worked to my advantage in this particular soap so I'll just finish getting this all smoothed out on the top as best I can and then I will go ahead with the piping hi so I'm back to do the piping I have my lye water which I've got some titanium dioxide in and I've got my oils here I'm going to give this a quick blend up just to get that titanium dioxide through and then um, pour it into my oils and blend that up So I've got that all blended and it's to about a medium trace and just while that finishes setting up I'll get my other bits uh, ready to do that piping. Okay so that's starting to set up quite nicely. I have in this little container here just some little um, soap balls that I've made using some no, um, no sweat melt and pour soap. I have just a little bit of mica drizzle here in the orange pop mica. And I also have my piping bag. I'm using a Wilton 4B tip on the end of that one. And I'll also have a little bit of mica just to dust over the top to make it look like um, chocolate powder once it's done. So we'll just let that set up a little bit more and then we'll come back and we'll pipe the top. Okay, so I'm back to do the piping. As I said, I've got a Wilton um, tip 4B in here. And all I'm going to do is work across my soap and do four dollops. Now in my piping mix, I've not put any fragrance oil because like I said, I'm not sure if this one will discolor. I believe it will, because it, it just smells so sweet and delicious that it, there must be vanilla in it somewhere. So I decided that I'd put the bulk of the fragrance oil into the base. You still get a great smelling soap. And then the, the piping would just be plain white soap so I'm just going to keep going backwards and forwards piping just these four dollops across the top and hopefully make it look like cream sitting on top of the on top of a lava cake and once I've got all my um, piping on we'll pop some of those orange soap balls and then decorate it with a little bit more mica and some drizzle have enough left in here just to give a nice little dollop in the middle of each of these soaps to put one of these soap balls so I'll pop one of these down the middle of each and hopefully we don't run out now on my last video I was asked if I insulate my soaps and I don't um, they seem to hold their color well so I don't 
force my soaps to gel or anything I keep them in these um, in these wooden molds and just leave them on the side on my high tops I don't do anything at all with them if they're a low top soap I generally cover them over with just a little bit of grease proof paper just to try and keep the soda ash off them but otherwise I don't do anything special to my soaps I just let them do as they want having said that though we are in the middle of a very very hot and long summer and all of my soaps have been filmed in the summer months we're currently experiencing like um, 33 34 degrees with about 70 percent humidity as a minimum going right up into the 90 percent humidity so that probably is helping with the colors in my soap so we'll see. but when I did them in winter I never insulated them either and I still got a nice even color distribution through my soaps and nice bright colors so it's probably um, gelling itself within these wooden molds the only soap which I will eventually do a video on that I do anything special with is my signature bar of soap which I call the Cleveland honey bar and I use uh, beeswax and honey from a friend's hive who has hives here in Cleveland, just a little town about 10 minutes down the road from where we live. And with that soap, because I add both honey and um, beeswax into it, I always pop that one into the fridge to stop it from overheating and spilling out everywhere. So I'll just put the last of those little soap balls on there and I'm just going to grab a little bit of the mocha mica I'm going to pop it into my tea strainer and I'm just going to give a really light um, dusting to kind of make it look a bit like cocoa powder so I'm going to come up from quite high otherwise I end up with great big um, lumps of mica which I don't want I just want a real fine dusting like cocoa powder would look okay so I'm happy with that and now I'm going to get my little pot of orange pop mica which I've mixed with just a little bit of olive oil and I'm just going to put a little bit of extra drizzle on there and this one smells absolutely beautiful so really hoping that we're going to keep that fragrance held most of the fragrances I have been using hold the fragrance really well even weeks after they're hitting the um, shelves for sale so I'm hoping this one's going to be the same okay so there we have it that is chocolate orange lava cake i'm going to leave this one for 24 hours and i will come back tomorrow and cut it and we'll see what we've got inside okay so we're back to cut the chocolate orange lava cake now i have got a fair few air holes throughout the sides but i do feel that kind of adds to the whole effect of it being a chalk orange lava cake so it will look kind of cakeish once it is cut so I'm going to use my multi bar cutter here and I'm just going to line it up onto here and now just before I cut that remember yesterday when we made this I put aside a little piece to test what color it would go it has gone quite a tan color I'll keep an eye on this over the next few days and see how dark it actually gets. Um, so next time I make it, I know not to put it in any white sections. So we'll just make sure that we have got this all nicely lined up so we don't cut any of those soap balls. It's looking good, so down we go. So we'll start pulling them out. So even though the sides have got all those little air pockets in, the middle of it's looking really nice there. So I'm really quite happy 
with how it's turned out even though this fragrance oil was a bit of a racer next time I make this one I will hand stir that fragrance in to make sure that I have a bit more time to work on getting those layers in there but overall considering how quickly it thickened up on me I'm very very happy with how that's come out so I hope you liked this video and if you did please leave me a th thumbs up and leave any comments down below if you haven't already please feel free to subscribe to my channel and I will bring you another soaping video or maybe something else next week bye